Are we on? Good. Good morning, good morning. Nice to see that everyone's a little pinkish today, so that means you got outside yesterday. Really nice that summer shied or decided to show up. So my first thought was I was out, uh, I was painting something outside in the backyard, sitting or standing in the sun, realized it's really hot today. <laughs> And it's like, I'm not going to complain about this. But, um, no, it's good to see everybody. Um, oh, I want to, uh, I was reading something. So this was uh, in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. So it starts off, when the day of Pentecost came, they all came together in one place. Now, most people continue on because it gets exciting after that. But God's actually stopped me at that first verse because the point was they all got together. Um, and then I started thinking about everything that happens in the Bible, a lot of how it happens in the Bible, is because people got together. It's human interactions. It's where God comes and shows up in power. So... Why are we here together? Because we're gathered together, because we're expecting God to do something awesome today. And, uh, and I was also thinking about the fact that if you're having a hard time praying, or you're having a, just a hard time, or, or you're having a hard time connecting with God, get together with somebody else. I guarantee you, God will show up. So let's stand, we'll pray, and we'll get into, uh, into the mode for today. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for today. I thank you for what you want to do today, for what you want to accomplish in our lives. Lord, I thank you that you're calling your church back together, to, to gather together, whether it's ladies, men, together, leadership. Um, you want to bring us back together. You want to meet with us there in power and by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that whatever you have for us today, whether people come up with a word or an encouragement or whatever, um, I just pray people came expecting and ready to deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we start, I am going to do a couple of announcements, so you may sit down, um, and then I'm just going to let Brett go. Um, so first off, there is a cake. Okay, so there is a cake downstairs after church. Um, we're going to celebrate sort of the ch uh, church library and what's been going on there. Um, so please mosey on down there and we'll do that. Um, also, uh, there was a sign-out sheet for coffee and cookies and things. Apparently that sheet disappeared during the graduation. So a new one is there and it's blank. So if you did sign up, please sign up again. And if you'd like to sign up, you can sign up. Um, that way we know sort of what's going on there. Um, I believe that's all the out. Oh, yes, and Jess has an elephant. But there's a whole body out on Facebook. <laughs> and Stan talks about his grandkids all the time. And uh, Terry's not here anymore, so it's my job <laughs> to be like, he also has grandchildren. Um, you have been praying for so long, and I have been praying for so long. And I can't even, I don't even know, my sister is pregnant <laughs> and they're having a baby December 30th and this child is so covered it's just gonna come out speaking tongues and I'm so excited <laughs> because this is actually a miracle God is in control of all life and he is in control of all the destinies of all of us and I'm so grateful for the prayers and I just wanted to share um, I used to ask Rebecca if she wanted to just stop telling us when she would go in for different procedures because then she would have to tell us it didn't work. And she's like, no. She goes, we tell people because we feel the prayers and we need the prayers and we're living in the prayers and all of this is part of God's plan and all of this is from the Lord. And that woman has been filled with so much joy for the past two years on purpose, consistently, and you guys were part of that. So thank you and God is good. Hallelujah. You may go. Lead us out. Morning. 
So the passage that I have today for everyone is a very well-known verse. <clears throat> and uh, I always give something that you can think about while you're into worship and how it reflects on each one of us with our hearts as we pour into God and God pours into us. And uh, the passage of the day is, even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. So the second part of that <clears throat> is, I will fear no evil. You are with me. So that's where I'd like you to put your hearts today is just realize that he is with you. And fear is Satan's way of getting to each one of us. And uh, I just want you to know that God's with you with every step that you make. And there's the fear is something that we can control through the power of God with our hearts and how much we pour into God, God pours into us. So as we go into worship, keep that in your mind and in your heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power. The splendor of the King, oh, in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, dark.
let's fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often. Every song will stand and it will never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. It's all that I have is my heart. Hallelujah. I've nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah I've got one response I've got one My arms stretch wide. I will worship you. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. All that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah, and I know. Nothing else fit for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah Come on my soul oh, Don't you get shy on me Lift up your song You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You've got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Sometimes I get lost because it just carries me to a spot. I forget where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> the 
And this song here is just, it's something to think about after worship. When we're sitting around and the music's fade, and listen to the word and how much God has soaked into our heart. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply Longing just to bring something that's of worth that'll bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within to the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing I've made it when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus King of endless worth no one could express how much you deserve though I'm weak all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things are you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, where it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, but it's all about you. It's all about you. I'm coming back, back to, to the heart of worship. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, it's good to get lost in worship. Never know where you're going to end up. But you'll end up somewhere good. That's yeah. promised. Thank you, guys. So, I guess I've done announcements. Are you ready to roll? Okay. So, Stan's got a word for us. So, I'll call up Stan and pray for him. Right on. You can all stretch out your hand towards Stan. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Stan. 
Lord, I thank you for the pastor's heart that he has and his evangelistic heart, Lord God, and his call to see our community changed. Lord, I just ask that the word that he brings forth would be pour out of him like a broken vessel. Yes, Lord. Lord, let it do what you want it to accomplish today in Jesus' name. Bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Miles. Uh, after, uh, after the message this morning, we'll be having communion, and so at that point, we'll shut off the uh, live feed uh, just before we go into communion. And I have a sense for those that are in the house that there will be an opportunity to, uh, for prayer and for, uh, we call it altar time, but an opportunity for prayer. And when I started the series a few weeks ago, I, I had a sense that at that moment that and I, and I have continued to have that with me the past three weeks, that at the conclusion of this three-week series, we would have an opportunity to respond. And uh, so uh, uh, I've asked Margaret and, and Miles to be with me uh, during that, and, and Mei Ling to be. I haven't had a chance to talk to Mei Ling, but she's on the eldership team, so there you go. But uh, just, just to kind of be aware in case we need support at, at the altar. And there's something powerful about just standing together, just as brothers and sisters, just as fellow believers on the journey. You know, none of us are extra special in that sense other than we're all special before God. But it's something about being with a brother, being with a sister, and just together, just saying, yeah, I agree. You know, and uh, Lord, touch our lives, right? And uh, I believe this morning would be such a time. So that's sort of the the focus today. Uh, as as Mile prayed, and I so appreciated that prayer, I uh I do really feel a heart for our town and not just our church. Uh, and this message kind of births out of that. And we were talking about the 70, and the 70 were called into the towns. And, uh, and so uh, we started a, a, a few weeks ago with how the 70 or the 72, depending on your translation of the Bible, they were called by the Lord Jesus Christ to go into their towns. And then they were led to go into their towns. They were called by the Lord, and then they heard the Lord how to go into their towns. They were led. And then today, we'll follow up and talk about how when they came back, the evidence was in the testimonies and the stories that were shared where they were used to see people healed. They were, they were used to help people become whole. They were used to help people find peace. And so we'll talk about that this morning. And so my thought is that as we look at the 72 or the 70, these individuals in, in the gospel, Luke chapter 10, and we will read that story shortly in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, we find really, uh, I believe, and the words came to me this morning, that we find within their lives, these 70 individuals who are sent out in pairs, uh, we find a foretaste of God's plan for all of us as disciples. See, we, we might be led to discount our responsibility or our calling or to minimize who we are by simply looking at the 12 apostles, the 12 that were his inner circle. And to think that, you know, like when the apostles died, healing stopped or people being prayed for ceased or that there was a cessation of of the gifts of the Spirit that took place. But it was used and God used so many more people than the 12. The 12 were obviously very unique in their position with the Lord. But I think on, with intentionality, there were times like this where Jesus just would look at his disciples, those that had walked with him, and he says, okay, you've been walking with me now. I empower you to go out and use my name, right? And to pray for people, right? And so I'm glad I did that. So, so I see within this story of the 70 a foretaste of something before the cross that we have seen now in the fullness of time after the cross, after his death, his burial, and his resurrection, that he has commissioned us and he has called us all into our world. And that we're to go out and we can be expect and open to being led by him and that we are all instruments of healing, instruments of peace. Instruments of expressing his good news within our world. So in Luke chapter 10, again, we read verse 1. It says, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him 
to every town and place where he was about to go. And he told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or bag or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. And when you enter a house, first say, Peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you. For the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. And when you enter a house, town and, and are welcomed, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near. Luke chapter 10, verse 1 through 9. Now there are several other verses, but for the sake of time, we won't, we won't read them right now. We will refer to them as, as time goes on. So again, um, Margaret, could you bring me my water? I, I seem to leave it over there somewhere. And if I disappear from the camera, everybody will wonder where I went. So, so anyway, so, so just to, so to move into this. So, so we find that the disciples were sent out by the Lord. They go out. And in this particular case, he, he sent them out in the buddy system. I'm using that instead of the two by two thing, right? I, I like that. So it's this buddy system. Who's going to buddy up with who or however they did that, right? But, and then the two of them would go out into the different towns together, right? For support, right? And I think there's a lesson in that too, right? That's not necessarily part of my message. I haven't got to my sermon yet, so I don't think you should count this. But, but, but the point is that it, as, as, as he, he sent them out, he wasn't saying to them, this is the only method, right? You know? And we're so crazy as human beings, you know, we really are, you know, we want to find the method, method, and then we want to patent the method, and then we, you know, we, we want to, and, and that's the way you do it. And so, so if, if somebody else do it this way, then it's, you know, it can't be God because we're not doing it this way. Well, let's just give it a rest, right? That's not, it's like Jesus healed people. Aren't you glad Jesus so creatively healed people? Isn't it a shock to you that in the church we don't have these denominations called the one touch, the two touch, the no touch, and the mud and eye church? You know, because because we have a way of just saying, this is the way you do it, right? And so Jesus creatively just kept trying to blast that apart by saying, it's not the way you do it, it's who you listen to, right? And respond to. And the authority of going in him, right? That, that's really what he's saying in all of this. And in this situation, he sent him out that way. And he did it intentionally to show them we, we need each other. And we need to know we're supported by one another and however that looks. So, so let's launch out and let's look at this. Specifically in relation to uh, being instruments of healing and being instruments of healing as we go. And so you are called. My friends, you are called. And as you're called, the Lord will lead you into your calling. And as you are led into your calling, you will find you will be an instrument of healing, an instrument of peace, an instrument of good news, an instrument of life in your world, in that. And so there's a recognition of your calling and then thereby an openness to being led to hear what he has to say within the world you live and responding to that. As John Wimber, I'll, I'll quote him a little, later, a little later, but I like it so much I want to say it now before I get to it. And that is... John Wimber, somebody followed him around. Uh, uh, Randy Clark uh, was involved with him in ministry and still is, I think, isn't he? Yeah, to a certain extent. Anyway, but, but John, w John Wimber, uh, back in his day, followed Randy Clark at the altar and so forth and followed him and observed how he saw people minister to and healed and so forth. And, and, and it's interesting, Randy Clark asked John Wimber, some things about it. And one of the things John Wimber said to him, he says, I, I just bless what I see God is doing. I just bless. So he was ministering at the altar. People are getting healed. He says, I just bless what I see God is doing. And that's what Jesus did. He just blessed what he saw the Father doing. Right? And that's all we're called to in our world, just to bless what we see him doing. And so he's opening something up. We walk into that. Right? We see a possibility or we sense something, we just, we just walk into that. And we bless where he takes us, right? 
we become his hands, we can be. So I love that. I think that's so good. Anyway, so 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 but this morning I want to talk about how how we go as these individuals in the hands of the Lord. Healing, yes, it includes us in the church. And it includes us as church. Wasn't that cool what Miles said us this morning about Acts chapter 2, verse 1? What was it again, Miles? Uh, 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 they all came together, and we need to come together. And the Lord will heal us and minister to us as we come together. However, the point is I am making, not to diminish that, is, but, but what I'm saying here in this story that we're looking at, it was, it was not just as they came together, but then as they went out. And as they went out, they were instruments in the hand of the Lord. So it's not just for here, right? But it's for us as we move forward and move out and as we go into our world, into our people. And so my, my goal this morning is in recognizing this is simply, I felt, you know, I've only got one sermon this morning to share with you. And it's impossible to go into a, few hour teach and, and workshop aspect and, and interactive aspect to unfold kind of totally the message of healing, which has so many pieces of, of it. And yet there's such a simplicity of it because it's just the grace of God working upon my life to touch other people's lives, right? It comes down to that simplicity. But listen, this one thing, so, so my goal this morning, my thought is this. My goal today as I present this to you as you go is simply this, that the Spirit of God will open the door in your spirit. That the Spirit of God would open your mind to the possibility that the Spirit of God will open your heart to the possibility that you and your world can make a difference. And be an instrument of healing. That the Spirit of God this morning as we speak and as we move forward throughout the service would open up your heart and your mind to the possibility that you are a, that you could be and are a vessel. That your, that your heart would be open to that. Because by that happening, it unlocks so much and allows you to be led and nurtured to move forward. So I pray that this morning he would open your heart to the possibility in your world you are an instrument of peace you are an instrument of good news you are an instrument of life you are an instrument of wholeness and healing in the hand that, 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 that the spirit of God would, would just crack that door open that you would see that possibility for it is not a possibility. It is a reality and it is what we have been given by Him. But sometimes before that to come to us, there must be this, this adjustment in our mind that to open our hearts to see, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so, with that in mind, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, we have the authority to go. We have the authority to go. That's what Jesus said. Now, who am I to question Jesus? Jesus said, so he said in Luke chapter 10 and in verse 19, he said this. And so I pray in Jesus' name that your heart would be open, that, that the, the thought would come to you that within you, not just within someone else that's in the church that you respect or whatever, but that in you is, is that ability, is that opportunity, that there is that calling that you can be led to be an instrument. I pray the Holy Spirit will open your heart, whether you're in the house or listening to us on live stream in Jesus' name. And so in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. 
You know, aren't those last few words kind of cool? You know, I've often thought about it, about the part, I've given you authority. I, I often think about that. You know, it's my go-to, right? I, I just love when I go to this verse. I just sometimes don't see anything else in the verse. I just think, wow, isn't that, you know. But, but, but lately I've been thinking about the last few weeks about that. Nothing will harm you. It's like Jesus is not just saying, I'm giving you authority to make a difference in your world. He says, he says I'm protecting you and I'm covering you as you go. Isn't that pretty awesome? I'm covering you. I, I, I think we need to hear that too. I'm covering you as you go. I'm with you. I'm watching over you. I got your six, right? I got your six. We need to know that. It's easier for me to reach out and try something when I know he's got my six. Right? Yeah. And so... Authority, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Authority is refers to ability. It refers to capacity. It refers to competency. And so Jesus says, I give you authority over the darkness in the world and into the specific darkness that you enter into in that area of the world where you go. And he pictures it and uses the terminology and the 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 analogy of if you will of snakes and scorpions right he's not talking i think everybody knows he's not talking about snakes and scorpions right but he's talking about the darkness that you will face in that area and he says, i give you authority he says so so he said and he says i'm giving you my authority so i am giving you the ability to step into that i am giving you the capacity even though you don't feel that capacity i am giving you the capacity to step into that. I am giving you the competency you need to step into that where I send you. Because I have called you to that, so I'm going to lead you in that, and you will see the results. That's what he's saying there, isn't he? he in other words, he's saying, to put it another way, is I am giving you to the right to act under my authority. Right? So that's all in that. I have given you the authority. So, so, which, which also implies and speaks to the fact that He has given us power. In fact, the power that He has given to us is beyond the power that the 72 got. Because in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, after Jesus rose from the dead, and in light of Pentecost, which was just about to happen, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, right? All these things tie together, right? And so when you speak about power, it's not a feeling, it's not a sensation, it's, it's not a force of will. It's not, you know, because you, let it, let it, you, you listen to the latest hit song, you know, and, and, and you got goosey, goosebumps, you know, right? That, that's, that's not it. It is, it is power. It is that which is spiritually dynamic. That which is in, that it is his empowering presence. And may I go so far as to say it's dynamic and empowering presence of God when you least feel that it is there. Because I'm not talking about how you feel when you're standing beside me and I just preached it. I'm talking about how you feel on Monday morning when you are in a situation. And that you can just do that breath prayer and say, God, I need you now. Right? Right? Inside your heart. That's what we're talking about. Right? The baptism which then followed was that empowerment that comes to us to touch our world. May the Lord crack that door open a little more in our lives and in our spirits and our hearts to see that. Because in cracking that open and thereby seeing, opens up the possibilities and opens up the ability to, to take the risk of faith, to listen, to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to me within the current context that I find myself. 
Ezekiel 47 is an amazing chapter in the scriptures and picture. And you, it's interesting in Ezekiel chapter 47. You know that's the story, that's the one where it talks about how how the river flows out, right, in the temple and the, the cornerstone and the, and how how the how the water comes out the side of the temple and it's just a little stream and you know the further goes out and the, you know they they measure it out and it you know right of course everybody wants to get their measure tape out want to figure out geographically what that looks like but that's not what it's talking about it's what the point is that it's coming out of the temple is this this moving of the spirit this this that the, the further out it went the wider it got and the deeper it got and the more powerful it became as it moved out from the temple which is a tremendous picture that it is saying to us as you as you as as they as you move away from the temple it became deeper and it became stronger i believe this reflects to the church as it goes the lord wants the temple to be we need to be together and and as we come as we've come out of this season over these past couple of years, I, I I like to believe that that has hopefully become more significant to you of the recognition of that and what the scripture says about our need to be together. When you see Acts two, they were together. When you see Acts four, when they after they went out and they needed each other, they were together. When the place shook, they were together. Right. So we need that. I'm not saying we don't. I need that. I need that. I missed that. I missed that. I didn't like having to stand in front of a three millimeter or whatever looking camera all by myself. I wanted to be with you. I saw the point. I saw the significance. I saw the purpose. I saw the hand of God, but I still need you. So we need each other, right? But the point also is within that context and the reality, as we are in the temple and we are together in that sense, there is something significant within the picture that is described in Ezekiel 47 that says that and reflects that as the church goes forth, as the church goes out from the temple concept of what it is, the anointing increases as you go. The anointing, and it's so counterintuitive to what we often think, but the anointing, whether we feel it or not, the, the potential, the possibilities, the capacity moves into a, a deeper and a broader and, a, and, and, a, and more of a current that can flow from you out in the world that you are in. And so the 72, they go out and they come back and they think, whoa, what God did. And now they're back. But what did they do? They came back together again, right? And they told their stories to each other. But they saw that reality, not just of Jesus doing, but the multiplication of what Jesus did as they went out. What's happening? The river's growing. It's getting wider. It's getting deeper. There's more current. There's more power. It's the same thing. Healing like the 70. And, and, and the story in that is that as comfortable or incomfortable or whatever it is, when we get together, there's such power in that. I find that when we come together to pray for each other. There is something within the symbolism of Scripture and the teaching of the Word of God that shows that He sits on us in, a, in, a, in another dynamic dimension when we're out there. And it's not an emotion. It's a reality. And we need to see what he is doing and bless it. And he shows up. Amen? And so, secondly, there, there, there is a powerful witness that takes place within the context of bringing healing and peace to people. There is something profound. Jesus spoke to that. In fact, he said in this story in Luke chapter 12, Luke 10, I mean, in Luke 10, verse 12, 13-ish, kind of around that area, he said, he said to them, um, he, said when, he said to them this, he said, it's going to be more tolerable in Luke chapter 10, verse 12, 13, more tolerable, 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 Right? For Sodom, and, and you know, then it will be for Capernaum. 
in places that have seen what I've done, Jesus said. The words that I spoke, but also what? The deliverances, the healings, the miracles that they have seen. It's going to be more tolerable in the day of judgment for Sodom because, because if they had seen these things, they would have turned their hearts to God. You have seen, many people have seen these things and they're not. Well, what is he saying in that? He is saying the strength, the, the power, the, the witness to the reality of who God is was, is so much stronger when the signs are following. That's what Jesus is saying. So therefore, you will be held more accountable, he's saying to Capernaum, than Sodom will be because they didn't get it that strong as you're getting it because they're seeing all this stuff. You know what I mean? That's my language, right? But that's what's going on. So what, do you, so what is Jesus saying? He's saying it brings more strength to your witness when there is demonstration, when, 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 there is, when you step in and, and just be Jesus with skin on. Right? Right? And that's what they found, right? My family testimony is an example of that. And I've told it so many times, pieces of it, and I'm only telling pieces today. But when my mom was delivered... And my mom was healed. I mean, I couldn't stand being home. I didn't want to be home. I left home. I was 17 years old, and I, I literally went up to Port Hardy and lived with some friends and bust into this because I didn't want to be home. Lived there with my friends for three months. Didn't want to be home. No way I wanted to be home. Couldn't stand it. Didn't want to be there. It was too oppressive. And I and I wasn't a spiritual pe being. I didn't have I didn't have a, I didn't have the words. I didn't have the 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 framework in my mind to explain that or to even understand it. But I just knew I couldn't be there. And then when I came home, after my mom came to know the Lord and my dad came to the Lord, and I saw what I couldn't describe, but now have I now have the grammar the terminology and the words and the framework for it my mom got healed my mom got delivered and so did my dad now I couldn't have put it together that way what I could put together is I felt peace in the home I felt I felt a spirit that was different but at that point, I couldn't have even said that. You know, right? But mom was whole. And dad was whole. And that got my attention. What they got, I wanted. Even though at that moment, I couldn't, I wouldn't say I wanted. Right? That's my, right? But I wanted. You know? And my mom began to speak to me, and I wouldn't agree that I wanted what she had. But I wanted it. Inside, I was crying out for it. And her words had weight. Were her words polished? No, she just came to the Lord. But it was mom speaking to me with her own language, and it got my attention. There's something profound about the power of, of people seeing the reality of Jesus Christ and what the Spirit of God does. That's what happened with the 72. They, f People felt, sensed, and saw. And they wanted that. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 20, he said these things, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Right? And, and that's, that's it. That's it. That's it. And so we are called, my friends, we are called to be instruments of healing in our world. Right? Just being there and being available and listening. Right? Sometimes we're busy and we don't know our listening skills there, but you can still commit that to the Lord on moments like this, like today, right? And you say, Lord, you, you, can, you can be really, you know, you can actually be very honest with the Lord. 
you could say something like, Lord, you know me when I get to work. Man, I'm so tunnel visioned. I'm so focused. I can't think about nothing else. You know, right? How in the world am I going to hear you? You know, you know, tell them that. And then just add and say, Lord, so help me figure it out. <laughs> you know what? He will. Isn't that fair? Help me. Maybe you got to smack me. Whatever you got to do, but get, get my attention so that I'll, I'll listen, you know? You know, it, just however that is within your world and your context and your reality. The Lord is so awesome. He's so gracious. Point is, we are called to be instruments of healing. And so Jesus told them to heal the sick. It says in Luke chapter 10, verse 9, it says this. He said, heal the sick and tell them all God's kingdom has arrived and is now within your reach. The Passion Translation. Sometimes you just got to hear it differently. Isn't that something? He says, heal the sick and tell them all God's kingdom has arrived and is now within your reach. What a message. Jesus said, heal the sick. Bring them peace. Do you know what? Some people, the most powerful healing they could have is have peace in their heart. For some people, the most powerful healing they could have is peace to their soul. For some people, the most powerful healing they have is not something, I'm not discounting physical healing, but I'm just saying, let's bring it into the reality and the context of where people live, right? Right? And they brought a message of peace. Before it said healing, it said peace. It said shalom. Right? In the Hebrew. Go bring shalom. Right? And, and this is what we're finding here. And so, so, so it says in Isaiah 52 verse 7, I was compelled to share this verse. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace. Right? Isn't that wonderful? That's, that's God speaking to us. That's what he says. Jesus modeled this, you see. He told the 70 to go out in his name. Right? And, and they're just built like us. You know, who would want to leave Jesus? I mean, you know, like, I want to just stay with you. Yeah, he said them all up. I'm staying here. I mean, I get to see you do all this stuff. You want to mean me go out, right? And it's the same thing with us. We come together or we with each other and we hear the stories and share and it's just so wonderful and yet part of our calling is to go but then our calling is to come back right and to figure out how can i make a platform an opportunity for us as we come back to share that stuff with each other right we call them testimonies we call them their stories and you know, if you get something and you feel something, you know, tell our service leader. If, if, there, if You know, or tell them at whatever meeting that is. But somehow we have to make space for that, right? Within our realities. And so Jesus modeled that. He told us example. And so, and so, so look at Paul. Here's in Acts chapter 14, verse 8 and verse 9. And in Acts chapter 14, verse 8 and 9, we find Paul. Here's a, a classic example in Paul's life. And so Paul is preaching Acts. You can look at it. I will, I'll tell the story. You can read it. Acts 14, verse 8 and verse 9. Paul is speaking. And as he's sharing about the Lord in a meeting with a lot of people there, quite a few people, I'm sure. And, and as he is, Paul gets what we would say in 1 Corinthians 12 is a word of knowledge. He gets an, 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 a knowledge he had, which is basically the gift of knowledge to know something that he could not know on his own, right? And so he gets a word of knowledge that that man over there that's crippled over in the whatever row it was, I'm not going to say what, but whatever, wherever it was in the building, he says, he has faith to be healed. <laughs> he's just, and I mean, he's speaking on whatever he's speaking, right? And all of a sudden the Holy Spirit, see, see, he's tunneled in. He's focused on whatever word that was, right? And out of that, God takes him and he says, that guy over there is ready, right? So if he can do that to Paul, he can do it to you when you're tunneled in on something else, right? And he says, he's that guy there is ready. Just tell him to stand up, right? Now, 
Of course, we think he immediately did it, but maybe it took him 10 minutes during his message. That happens to me all the time. You know, you, you, you just say, well, you sure, Lord? I mean, I got this great thought. You know, right? You know, right? You know, or, or whatever. Or people really responded. Did you hear the amen section? You know, or whatever, you know. But it, and it keeps coming back to him stronger and stronger. And so finally he says, yeah, this is, I can't get away from this. Hey, Joe, <laughs> you know, or whoever, you and the, you and the purple, you know, whatever shirt over there, right? The Spirit of God has told me that you have the faith to believe. Stand up and be healed. And he does. Right? And, 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 and so the cripple had faith. It's an example there. Paul was, Paul was called. And in his calling as he spoke, he was led. And in this case, God gave him a thought. Right? That that guy's ready. You know, right? To be healed. Not ready to be he's ready to stand up and he went with him and he and all what did he do he just simply blessed what he saw god was doing right god was working on that so he just told him go ahead <laughs> you know and he got healed and that's where that thought comes from today all we're really called to do is to go out among people and just bless what we see him doing. Right? And to him, like Paul at that moment, the guy in the church, the temp, whatever, the synagogue, wherever it was, community hall, it was just a new thought to him. That guy's got faith. But God was already doing it, you see. But he needed a man or a woman, in this case a man, right? To just verbalize that, right? You know, isn't that right? To proclaim that. And he was so ready, he just jumped out of his seat, right? Yeah. I'm sitting in the A-frame church in 1976 on June the 24th. And I was, I wanted to give my heart to the Lord. And I didn't know how. And the meeting shut down and a deep, heavy depression started to go back down on me like I used to get at home my mom and dad and the heaviness and darkness started to just envelope me and crush me. And the speaker was a guest speaker that Sunday, stood up, turned around. He says, I just got a, a word from the Lord. He says, I assumed everybody here was a believer, but the Lord just showed me that there's somebody here who's not a believer and you want to give your heart to the Lord. I want you to know that Jesus sees that and hears that right now. I want you to know, come on. Give your heart to the Lord. Now's the moment. And I went my way into the kingdom. And my, <laughs> Jessica, for those here, just said happy anniversary. My mom phones me June 24th every year. She phoned me on June 24th this year. And she said, happy birthday. <laughs> and every year it, it kind of shocks me. What do you mean happy birthday? And then I remember, right? You know or, or what it is. But she every year she'll phone me on June the 24th, which it says, remember Stan. Right? Happy anniversary. Yeah. But my point is, again, all he did, his name was Bert. He was the book guy. And all, all he did was just bless what God was doing. He just, God was doing, God was working on Stan's heart, and the Holy Spirit showed them, and so he responded. And maybe in your case, it's just, how are you? Maybe it's that. Right? You know? Whatever it is, that, that's all it is, guys. You are called to be an instrument of healing in your world. And today, I challenge you, just open your heart to the possibility. And God will take you the rest of the way of what that looks like for you. Amen. Open your spirit that you may hear. Well, I'd like to thank those that have joined us online and uh, we're going to pray together at this time for those of us that are here, but specifically for those that are watching online as well. And we're so delighted with all those that watch us online. God bless you, and we think of you. And, and uh, I just want to pray for you today at this moment and through the day and the week as you do listen to our service, to, that the Holy Spirit will make this all real to you. So, Father, we pray in Jesus' name for all those that are listening or will yet listen that the worship, the, the testimony, the, the thoughts shared throughout our service 
through song and words and, and the Word of God will enrich your heart. And I pray you will open up your heart to the possibility to recognize that the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you in your world. He led the 70 and He will lead you. He called the 70 and He is calling you. He used them to bring peace, shalom, to bring healing, and so He will use you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.